Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us on our uh, weekly Facebook Live at the new and improved time, 9 p.m. Yep. And uh, we're changing this up. This is where we... I hear a terrible echo. I'm doing it. Okay, working. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that I hired tech support. It was in our vows. It yeah. really was. 24 hours. I wish I had negotiated that better, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is where for like uh, the next hour we uh, are less, I don't know, we, we talk uh, great travel tips and give you behind the scenes stories upon uh, uh, shooting and filming and, and editing our show Places to Love. And uh, we, this week, are showing our Swiss episode. Actually, we did two episodes in Switzerland for season uh, one and two, and this is our yep. first one in the Bern region, where we featured Jungfrau, Interlaken, and the city of Bern. And so oh, we... Sorry. Sorry. What's my... There we are. Sorry. Start over. <laughs> so was that, did they hear me talk? They heard you. They heard me. Yeah. But... We're here. We're here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so here we, we are. Two, there's too many things at the last minute. <laughs> got it. Got it. So um, we're going to show our Swiss, Switzerland episode where we were in the Bern region. And we like to use these episodes that we shot as really a jumping off point. Whoa, that's a tease for what they're about to see, right? A jumping off point. So I'll like cut in, kind of give you behind the scenes what happened here, what we were going for, what maybe we wanted, but we didn't, eh, it just didn't work, and what we had to, all those kinds of things while point of, uh, you know, lacing in great tips. So um, the first uh, uh, subject we need to cover is Kevin's drink. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, we put this out on Facebook, and I just put it up on Instagram. Kevin, the other night, decided to um, make the, what do we think we're going to call this? My current favorite is the Yodeler's Cough. The Yodeler's Cough. That is a good one. Yeah. So Kevin, cheers. Cheers. Wow. Woo! And good night. Um, so why don't you describe your drink that you came up with? So my whole thing is, you know, trying to find... We, every week we do this, we try to have a, some sort of cocktail or wine or something that ties back to the episode that we're filming. Kevin we does it. this. I don't do this. Sorry, yeah. I do this. I just drink white wine. You have no interest in this at all. No. Something I do. And uh, it's hard to find things from Switzerland. Yeah, so, yes. You know, so they know they have wine, but they don't export it. We don't yeah. get the wine. There's so many great things made in Switzerland that they don't export because yeah. they drink they it drink all, it. or they do. Mm -hmm. So wine's a good example, and we will feature a Swiss wine in the season two Geneva, Chassos, right? Chassos. Geneva episode. But you know, I was starting to think like, well, what? What is Switzerland? What can we get? For? We can get we cheese. Yeah. We can get chocolate. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, what else can we get? And what do we have? Ricola. Yeah. That's Swiss. Yeah, that is really Swiss. And so I did a little drunken experimenting one night and nice. figured out, well, what if I <laughs> dissolve Ricola in gin? What happens then? I feel like with my, my inner um, Ferran Adria. Like, you know, nice. try, trying to like yes. come up with these, these things. El Bulli, you're, yeah. you're, you're going back. Wow, yeah. No, I was really impressed And I actually by happened this. to have a bottle of Swiss gin that uh -huh. I bought at Duty Free a couple years ago. Nice. Can uh, they see that? Or is it, are they oh, just yeah, seeing no, the picture? Right. Yeah, so Thank you should be up. There, so who's the tech advisor now? Boom. There you yeah, go. Yeah, so that's uh, Swiss gin for you right there. Oh my gosh, you even got Swiss gin? Yeah. Holy mackerel, Kev, yeah. nice. Yeah. Why is it like almost gone? I don't know. I, know. I, do I have no idea what's wrong. But yeah, so I, does, I got a bunch of different wow. Ricolas and uh, fortunately, nice. fortunately the, um, the classic one right there in the... the the third original. One, third one for the left, the classic original was the one that tasted the best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, so the recipe was two ounces of gin, dunk a thing in there for an hour, and it turns a nice color, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of people were really excited about this drink. They were scared about this drink, but everyone agreed they have all the ingredients. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of these mixologists come up with these amazing drinks, and you don't have anything. You have to go to the supermarket. Everybody right now in your closet, you have Ricola's. Is, is there a better cocktail in the world than this? Yes. <laughs> Are there readily available Swiss ingredients that you could get? Yeah. No. But we had other great, um, great uh, name suggestions. A feel oh. the burn. Feel the burn. For the city. I had the Alpine Hammer. Alpine Hammer. Um, the Ricotini. Ricotini was a good one. Had. Ricotini. Yeah. You'd have to say it like that. Uh, the Rico Leary. Yeah. That was nice. Regina, thank you very much for that one. But to finish the, so it's basically two ounces of gin, the, the Ricola for an hour. And the nice thing about that is that it imparts the kind of herbal stuff, but also sugar. And, you know, sugar is a pretty common ingredient in cocktails, so that kind of covers that. And all you need to add is lime juice to kind of freshen it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, twist the lime, mm -hmm. my lemon. 
Yep. I said lime juice. I meant lemon juice. Lemon juice, yeah. And it's, uh, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Very drinkable. And that really is. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, my mother gave, gave both of our, both our mothers gave us scotch at an early age, like three, <laughs> when we had a cough, right? So it just, it's just kind of that next step. I'm, um, I'm choosing not to sell my mother out on that one, but go ahead. Well, okay. Well, my mother used it when I was teething. And I mean, yeah. Um, so we're going to be showing our Swiss episode, and um, I thought I would start with a great traveler's tip and a traveler's tip that you can really use right now in your own home. And so it ties into the whole quarantine thing where we can't go anywhere. And that is, I always travel with a set of balls. I have been traveling with a set of balls my entire travel career. And these are, well, these are a new set, <laughs> um, but they're pinky balls. This is the type that I get. And it's just this solid, hard uh, a rubber ball that you get at toy stores or little novelty stores. And they're like, I don't know, $2.50 a piece. Um, actually, this one says 99 cents on the back of it. Um, and what I love about this is when after like a, a long haul flight, uh, a red eye, or maybe I've been on my feet all day seeing the sights, um, I come back to my hotel room and I put these on the floor and I lay down on them so they're right, right in between uh, my shoulder blades. And then I push up with my knees so all the weight goes into these balls and then I roll them down my back and they just work out every kink and every knot. And then I can either lie face down and put them like on my quads and roll out my legs a little bit. I can stand on them and work out my arches, but it just makes me feel like I've had like, you know, I don't know, a $200 massage uh, for five bucks. And in these times where um, I don't know if anyone's going to get foot rubs or massages, I, I'm certainly not. I don't even know if they're uh, available. I have no yeah. idea when. Yeah. Um, when this happens, um, but this is a nice, because I know we're all stressed out is what I'm trying to say. We are all stressed out and, um, and it looks like things aren't going to change for a little while. So just bring a little bit of happiness and calmness, get us at a balls. Yep. Um, so the first thing before we start the show is we've got a lot of great stories behind the Swiss episode, like a lot happened more than, more than usual behind the scenes shenanigans. And, oh. um, Hold up, you're not in the same room. Oh no, we're are we in the same room? We're in the no, same room. Does it look like? Last week. Oh, okay, okay. I'm trying um, to figure out what's going on here. Sorry. Keep going. Okay, so, uh, so are you ready for the pictures? Just so you know, you don't have to show it now. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right, but you're I'm, ready. I'm, okay. Uh, besides the early thing, I'm born ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, in Switzerland, so we we all flew into Zurich, and first of all, there was a major summer storm. We did this in July, June. This was uh, July ish of 2017. Okay. I think. Huge sum uh, summer storm in the United States knocked out the whole eastern seaboard. We were all waiting in Newark. None of the planes were leaving. Our international flight left three hours delayed, which never happens. Usually, they let the international flights go. And so that happened. So we were in the airport for a long time. Then we had the long flight. Which, so it's a long, longer flight to get to Zurich. I think it's a good what, nine yeah. hours. Yeah. I think I think it's a nine hours. So then we arrive, and then um, we had another. Oh, I want to say like two, three hour drive, two hour drive to uh, uh, Tun, two, where we were staying. Two ish, yeah. And um, so I mean, again, I've been in transit for a really, really long time, and I get to the hotel, which is fantastic. It's on this beautiful lake, and I'm so excited. And I put down my stuff and. I kind of you know get ready and then I go use the bathroom and I close the door and for some reason I locked it I locked the door but as I locked it well I know I lock it because I have children and they always open the door so it's just this natural thing to lock it and so I lock the door and something falls out of the lock and now it's permanently locked the door handle won't budge and I am stuck in the bathroom and I'm like no no I'm not really stuck good 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 I mean it won't and I can now there's a hole and I can kind of see my room and I can see that something's on the bottom of the floor whatever is the floor like held the door together in a tight grip and um, I'm like oh I, I can I can do this and so I really started and it just would not budge and so are you showing the picture now are they seeing I'm ready. It? okay okay show the picture so this became where I was I was locked in a bathroom for four hours. And not like a bathroom. You were locked in a toilet stall, basically. To a toilet room. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it, wasn't, it, was, no, there, it was just a room that had a toilet. I was in. locked in the toilet room. And so now I'm looking at this. Like, you're seeing the actual view I had, like, trying not to freak out. And I'm looking at what my tools are. So I'm, like, A-teaming it, right? I'm like, how can I use what's given to me to get to break out of the You know, what would Mr. T do, right? And, and <laughs> That's where you go. I'm, I'm a 70s girl. Uh, what, what, what would MacGyver do? Oh, you go, like, what would MacGyver. Mr. T do? No, 
Oh, Mr. Wow. T, Murdoch. You're going to be Mr. Yeah. Kool-Aid. Just smash through the thing. Not put me on that plane, Hannibal. Uh, I'm an A-team girl. Oh, my God, I love the van and everything. So uh, so I'm like, okay, I've got I've got a roll of toilet paper. I've got a, a dispenser for Kleenex. I've got a, a toothbrush, a, to- a toilet brush. No, I'm not going to touch that. No way, no way. And um, and I couldn't, I couldn't get out of the room. And so then I started yelling for help. But me yelling for help, um, I started to freak myself out. And so I was trying to figure out how do you yell for help where you're like, like, because I would start to go, help, help. And then um, I would make myself nervous. And I'm like, well, maybe if I could say it in a let, because I'm not like, like, I know I'm okay. I'm not like being held against my will. Is there kind of like a, hey, in your own time, could you help me? Um, But uh, so then I just fell asleep. I just curled up on the bathroom floor. Yeah, that one right there. And I fell asleep, and and then I was awoken by the knocks of my director Sylvia and my beloved stylist Christina Burns, and they were down at dinner. And I knew they were down at dinner, and I was like, oh, they'll realize I'm not, because I didn't have my phone, I didn't have anything, and they didn't. And Kevin was like, well, where's Samantha? And they were like, well, I'm in New York. Yeah, you're in New York. That's right. I'm sorry, you're in New York, and and you know it's like the it's the crew meeting where we're going to be talking about the show, so you want to be on the phone. And um, you're like, where's Samantha? And they're like, oh, she didn't come down. Like, well, what do you mean she didn't come down? She's like, oh, well, we left her texts and stuff. She's probably sleeping. And Kevin, very rightly so, was like, it's 8 p.m. in Europe. She Get her up. She can't be sleeping. Like, you got you to gotta hold on, right? As the co-executive producer, I feel like I'm the only one that can pull that card. Like, get her ass up. <laughs> She should not be sleeping. It's so true. No, no one, no one wanted it. No one wanted to knock on that door. They were, yeah. But uh, so then, then I was rescued. So, so anyway, so that was like my one of my most traumatic moments. I yeah. was, I was stuck in a bathroom for four hours. And at that point, we realized as a crew that we really needed to touch in with each other. Like, yeah. like if we don't see each other or you know, like knock on the door, like because a lot of times we're just alone. Um, mm-hmm. That was the first story. Are we ready for the second one? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So that big storm that knocked out the entire East Coast, it also prevented United from loading 22 cases of our gear. We travel with 22 cases of gear as well as eight big, you know, personal pieces of luggage. So in total, like 30 pieces. We travel with a lot of stuff. Way too much. And way too, way too much stuff. And we, we, we blame Brian for that. Oh, yeah. Our shooter. Yeah. He demands it. Um, and he thinks that uh, he likes to bring all these really nice lights because he's like, Samantha wants to look good. And he's right. And then he never uses them. <laughs> because I, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. So anyway, um, so we travel with a lot of gear and none of it showed up. And I would say in the 20 years that I've shot travel shows, this has never happened. Which no, not, not like happened. one case, yeah, none of it. Yeah, none Zero. of it. Zero. And so um, we are set to shoot, uh, not the next day because we were arriving late. So we had one day as a buffer, but we can't find the luggage. And it was supposed to be transferred to Swiss Air, but um, yeah. they're like, we, we don't see it. And then they called United and like, nope, Swiss Air has it. Yeah. And they're all like, we're like, we need. And you, so, you think in this time, you know, in 2018 or 17, that 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 kind of they would know where with barcode scanning and stuff, where absolutely. everything was. And I, both of them said the other guy had. Yeah, it. yeah, no, not 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 us. And so, yeah. um, so then none of us have any clothes. <laughs> And so as the executive, we all had our jobs, like, you know, emergency control here. And my job was to gather up the underwear choice and size of every crew member and go buy them underwear and no one, uh, and toothbrushes. That's what everyone needed. Everyone needed a toothbrush and more underwear. And so it really goes to show a great lesson when you're packing a bag. In the end, all you want is clean underwear and a toothbrush. Those those are your essentials when you pack a bag. So if you ever check a bag, make sure that's in your small handbag, carry-on, underwear, and a toothbrush. I would so, add a camera and a lens and a battery to that list. But, okay, yeah. But yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So, so then, um, and here's another great travel tip. And this is something I do a lot when things don't go right. I use Twitter as a customer service tool. So I reached out to United through Twitter. And if you go to your, any, if you have a Twitter account, on anyone's account, there's like a little envelope. If you touch, if you click on that envelope, that's their customer service and they offer 24 seven um, support. So I reached out to United. I'm like, you gotta help me. We are shooting a travel show in Switzerland. We have missed 22 cases of luggage. We have all the baggage tags. Can you help me? And they got back to me and they like to t- give us a picture of the tags and they went to it. So we had my producer and director on the phones all at all times yeah. because they're like, we don't know when it's gonna show up. 
Um, we had people in Zurich waiting for it. Remember? We rented. I was I was on the phone renting all the gear I could find in Zurich. You were renting all the gear you could find in Zurich because we, we were shoot. supposed to shoot the next cameras, day. sound, everything. Yeah. Maybe a better host. Um, but um, that was in Geneva, so I couldn't get it. Really, <laughs> you're so lucky. Um, so, uh, but long story short, the person on Twitter kept us. Uh, uh, he's like, I see it. It's in. It's in a warehouse. The entire lot was moved to a warehouse because of the storm. I mean, the storm just was crazy, and I see it. And I will tell you when it starts to move. And so he told us it's moving. It's mo- and now now it's loaded on this flight. And and they helped us. And in the end, we had all of our cases. And here I am lounging on all of them. Cue cue picture. You got it. Stand yeah. by. And, and three. so and there's Step the picture. We were so happy. This was all that all of that had gone missing except my carry on. I had my carry on bags, but all the cases. So um, oh my gosh, you know, not 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 fun. And it, the thing is, like Switzerland is such an amazing place to be. And we just had a rough start because of storms in the United States. And um, uh, and a, a, a particularly vindictive uh, bathroom handle. Yeah, and you know I think starting out, you know, get, we're going to get to the episode in, this in a second. Starting out with all of that drama, and you know, with the first day of filming was actually we didn't film at all. The first half day, we got we rented the gear then in the morning, and then we shot just like a half day with that rental gear. I think. Mm-hmm. No, sorry, it's even worse than that. We didn't shoot at all the first day. The second day, we had rental gear in the morning, and then the I, no, stuff showed up no, in the no. afternoon. Uh, and then they switched over to their gear. And, and so... We missed a half day of shooting, I know. We, we need four days, and we were going to two different locations in Switzerland, like yeah. different cities and yeah. places. And we were like, oh my gosh. But you wouldn't know it at all. When exactly. Now when you watch the show, everyone's cool. There is one part of the show where you know... That's, so the train? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that things aren't up to snuff. The audio wasn't great because we had rental. Isn't that something else they do in Switzerland? They do. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. All, right. all right, so let's start the episode. Okay. And again, this is in, uh, I don't know, I mean, there really is no such thing as the burn. We're traveling to a destination which possesses an epic beauty that has no rival in the world. Medieval cities amongst magnificent mountains with tender chalet villages that seemingly live in the sky. And while the physical beauty deserves a lot of praise, it shouldn't take all the credit. If happy cows make happy cheese, then a marvelous environment makes even more radiant people. I'm in the beautiful Bern region of Switzerland, where there's always more cowbell. I would say the whole mission of this uh, episode was to show that Switzerland is always known for phenomenal destinations and gorgeous views, but I really wanted to meet the people behind the views, the people who make the the cheese and the chocolate, so we get to know, as always with Places to Love, a more personal side to these destinations that we have dreamed our entire lives of going to. Of course, our, our show is sponsored. We come to you via PBS and your public television station, and we would not be able to do that were it not for our sponsors, our phenomenal sponsors are on the waterways right here, beautiful river cruise company, um, 22 boats on in Europe alone. A lot, a lot leave from Basel, Switzerland. And they, that's exactly yeah. it, yeah. And then, of course, go RVing. If you're RVing this summer, lucky you. Everyone's having a great time in their RVs, even newbies. Everyone's trying that out because it's a way to, to sort of, you know, hunker down, be safe, but still see... The, this beautiful country of ours. So those are our sponsors of season one. We were so happy because um, this is season one. No, we didn't know if we had a show here. We didn't know if people would watch it. And yet, this was one of our top-rated shows it was, yeah. of all, right? Definitely. I mean, how many, like, how many impressions do you think this show has? Oof, uh, a lot. A lot. And because it's a relatively small country, Oops. completely distinct experiences within an hour of each other. I'll be exploring the west central part of the country known as the Bern region. And my first stop is the renowned medieval village of Gestadt. Gestadt is infamous, I would say, rightly so. It has been a holiday destination for Hollywood royalty and actual royalty for well over a hundred years. And if you look at some of the shops uh, passing by, you can see that this is not your typical quaint Alpine village. And you would also think that, well, maybe money is really important here, but it's not the most important thing. In fact, many would argue that milk is. Mm. Mm. 
There's strong evidence to support that argument here in this little building buried on the side of a hill outside Gestadt. And it's bigger on the inside. I learned all of my like Swiss geography from James Bond movies. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. What a view. Hello, you must be Renee. Hello, nice Hello. to meet you. Mwah. Nice to meet nice you. To meet there you. are three kisses wow, in Switzerland. Do you notice that? Eve. You have to kiss three times. One, two, three. That's always a trouble thing. You gotta know the, the local kissing regimen. <laughs> I'm, I'm a host of a travel yeah. show. That's not hard for me. I know how many times to kiss. I am the manager from the Daily of Gstaad. The Daily of Gstaad is a cooperative for 74 farmers. They bring their milk every day to our dairy and they produce our own cheese, the Gstaad mountain cheese. So what are the cheeses doing right now? Are they being stored or are they, they are aging? They are stored, but at the same time they are aging. Look, I show you um, on every wheel you can find I think this is where um, our, day. and if people are annoyed that I'm August talking over things, you can always stream all of our shows. how long do we want that right online? Cut the phone. So, uh, so um, this kind of uh, really is what we want to do in the show with Gestadt, which is known as just this phenomenally wealthy destination. We really want to show the heart and soul, which is farmers. So this is a cheese collective, and there's something like 82 farmers. And the farmers um, are family farms that go back uh, easily 100 to 200 years. And so I'm with Renee, and he's showing me around this cheese cave, which is about 60 feet underground to keep the cheese at a natural uh, cool temperature. But so again, we love to go for the personal. Um, we love to show the people behind a place, not just businesses, but um, the people and sort of the effort that it takes to create these amazing experiences that we as travelers just get to show up and have, which when you go to Switzerland, you want some cheese. The raw material is always the same, it's milk. By wine, uh, we have different grades. Right. We have only the same milk, but uh, <laughs> the composition of the milk is not the same and they feed on the different uh, herbs. Can, can I pick one of up? Course, I just want to feel it. like how heavy one is. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, wow. That is, that's, that's a lot heavier than I thought. It's about 10 kilos, must be uh, 20, 25 Over, pounds. Oh yeah, 25 about pounds. 20, about pounds, yes. Oh my gosh, it's a tabletop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now we get to taste. Yes, uh, we prepared something for you. Mm. Oh, that is phenomenal. Mm. Mm. Good cheese. Mm -hmm. How deep underground are we? 20 meters. 60 feet. 60 Over feet 60 above. Feet? Yeah. Do you think in the Cold War they used that as a bomb shelter? Well, I don't know. And they certainly didn't say so. Here. Yeah. I know that all I need to do is get to the cheese cave in Gestadt and I'll be okay. Right, this is Fort Knox of cheese. Here, <laughs> here you are safe yeah. for eternity. Uh, yeah. All right, so I have heard so much about this. So what's yes. really awesome was this. This is one of our favorite, this is one of our favorite ideas. It, when you go to Gestadt, they have a fondue backpack. And for a, a price, you can just pick it up at like the tourism office and certain no, things uh, all over, right? I went to a, like a little shop, shop in like, town and you rent them, you buy that cheese bag mm -hmm. and you buy a bottle of wine. But it, it comes with everything. Everything else come, it comes with. Yeah. But so this was a funny story because also throughout this area that we're in, Gestadt and around, there's hiking trails and then there are parks with those big seating areas. They look like wine barrels. Remember that? So there are specific areas where you set up your fondue set because mm -hmm. the Swiss have everything figured out. And, um, and so you hike or you go on these lovely mountain walks to these um, tables that just sit out overlooking these gorgeous views. And that, there was a park with like five of them. And so we thought of doing that. Well, we originally planned on it. It was, it was it, you could only get so far with a car, then we had to bring all our equipment up there. And in the end, the view on the top of the cheese cave was- Was enough. Just as beautiful as that view. But here was the, here's the kicker. Of course, the Swiss are used to doing things a very certain way. That's what makes, they're precise, right? And they did not, they're like, well, there's the cheese, there's the backpack. And we're like, oh, we want to do the backpack. And we're like, well, people don't have fondue in the summer. Like, yeah, yeah, but like, it's really awesome. Like, oh no, you can't have, like yeah. no one, no one, no one has fondue. I'm like, yeah, but we're American. <laughs> I'll have melted cheese anytime. I but it's such a, an amazing experience. That, that they were sort of like taken aback by that. They're like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, people no, are not going to like seeing no, Americans yeah. eating fondue. Yeah, exactly. That's not how you how you do things. And for the record, I was there a month earlier scouting this episode, and it was about 90 degrees on that spot. And I was like, I can't imagine eating melted cheese 
And we actually had a cool day. Remember? I know, it was but cool then you guys got really lucky. It was a yeah, nice day. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, don't you want to know that there's a, a, a cheese backpack, a fondue backpack you can get? And season or no season, we just felt like a traveler yeah. would want to know that. So. Yeah. These Alpine villages are, are unreal in a sense. And you, you come here and they're very real. This is how people mm -hmm. live. Perfect yeah. spot for fondue. Perfect, perfect. Do you know, in the United States, we have a, a beautiful custom. Uh, every couple upon marriage is given a fondue set. Oh, yeah? Yes. Every couple oh. in America has a fondue set. We don't open it. We put it in the cellar or the attic for 30 years. And then we bring it out at a yard sale and we sell it for three dollars. Every American couple. I yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Know. <laughs> goes I'm right, that right? Of life. Yeah. It's a passage. I'm absolutely right. That's no, right. That's not the first time I've told that to joke on, no. on camera. I actually, if, you, if anyone was right? a passport that's, that's to molten Europe cheese. fan, uh -huh. I believe I was in Zurich too. and I said that same joke nice. and it fell flat, just like it did with Renee. <laughs> my friend American, like, oh my gosh. Everyone has a mm. fondue set and just oh thinks, mm, you clean it once, you're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. The air, um, but, the company, uh, anyway. I'm as happy as a cow. Yeah. A Swiss cow. What do you want more? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to be in Switzerland. About an hour away from Gestadt is the village of Wilderswil, a departure point for a 120-year-old cogwheel train. I'm taking the hour-long journey to an alpine plateau with an epic view. So we are rising to an elevation of 6,500 feet, so there's no choice but to Just sit phenomenal. back and so enjoy the views where things got and the company. Tough. So this was our very so first you scene. Each other? You're with kind of a travel brand new uh, travel equipment. Band? You are, okay. And and so it's so exactly. travel yeah, yeah, exactly. That's you amazing. You might just want to stop it here. Because, so um, because um, we didn't have a full set of equipment, and I don't know what, what an analogy would be of giving a cameraman or woman uh, a camera that isn't theirs. They know every dial. They set it. It's just... And, and now Brian is working with, I don't know, it's like maybe he has like oven mitts. It, it, I just like, well, it, he's so at a, at a, um, at a disadvantage. Yeah. And we're doing this scene and the, the camera is on these, it just kept sliding down. And yeah, every, there's actually, there's the, the, the like specific specifications of what setting and what aperture and all that kind of techie stuff. But then there's the physical thing of this 40 pound place. thing on your shoulder yeah. that has to, Fit and, fit and work. move yeah. and work and it, and it kept sliding it kept sliding so we would have shots and all of a sudden or the focus would be lost and and my heart went out to him because and he kept his cool it's just like you are you are asking I don't know someone to yeah. uh, it's just very 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 difficult but what I was really happy about this scene is we found this great group of women and we really we honestly want to show diversity wherever we can because we love it we celebrate it and uh, we, I just love that there were these young women from, uh, most of them were from, were living in London and they were part of this awesome group. And we just, I saw them and I was like, hey, can, do you mind going on camera? So these women that I'm about to be talking to had no idea. We were just kind of on the same train and we're there with our cameras and they're like, yeah, absolutely. And it was perfect. And I really, they just made the scene because we um, have a, had a great conversation. But um, what else did I want to point out? I think that's it. Yeah, you can continue. Okay. Well, this great, is a, great this is like a bucket list trip. It is. You know, that you plan years in advance for. You never, you get to go once. And you guys just get to come here for the weekend. We do. It's really a great way to meet people. Everyone is always so busy working. But so it's nice to find a group like this where you actually find people with similar interests. And where are you from? I'm Ugandan, but I live in London. Ah. I'm watching them from India, but living in London now. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Same. I'm from India, but living in London. What about you? Why did you want to come to this area of Switzerland, Young Crown? I mean, I've always heard about, you know, the mountains, the chocolate, and I've always wanted to come. Yeah. It's calling me. This was a line is amazing. I would love to sit here. Give me your best Swiss pronunciation of where we're going, because it took me a while. Schneidplatz. How do you pronounce it? Schneidplatz. <laughs> no. Schneidplatz. <laughs> <laughs> the name Schneidplatz is coming from this rock here. Mm -hmm. 
and you look from Lauterbrunnen up to the mountain and you see the oh. schienige Platte. It means shining plate. So just to kind of talk a bit about this. So, yeah. you, you know, you know, I, I had the good fortune to be able to scout this episode and we, you know, there was a lot of great ideas and things to do around here. But the main thing when people go to this part of Switzerland, usually you stay in Interlaken, which is like where a lot of the hotels are. Mm -hmm. um, and you go to the Jungfrau Yoke. Mm -hmm. Which is the tallest point in the Alps? It's yeah, the tallest yeah. In Europe, I and think. Interla yeah, and Interlaken is considered the gateway to the Alps. So it's really the heavily touristed, like you said. It's so touristed that there's even a Hooters. I swear <laughs> to God, there's yeah. a Hooters, and it actually it opens up at eight thirty a.m. next morning, tomorrow morning. And um, the way they describe it, because I think this is hysterical, it's like famous for. Uh, waitresses in short shorts and uh, chicken wings. And I thought that was really timely because today is National Chicken Wing Day. So there you go. Yeah, Thank you, Hooters. Perfect. Um, um, actually, though, in Switzerland, they call it Hooters. Nice. Get it? Good. <laughs> anyway, interlock it. But, um, Proceed. Yeah, but, but you know, the Jungfrau Yoke is the place people want to go, and it's, you know, and Samantha had been there a few, at least once before in, in her previous shows, and, and we, you know, I was really interested in that, but it's, so it's a lot of time to get to the top of this mountain. It's mm -hmm. like two different trains you have to take. And um, it's got a lot of fog. So the idea, we truck our whole crew up there and it's just covered in fog and you can't see anything. And so I kept asking, like, what, what other options are there? And they mentioned Schnigi Plaza and this Alpine Garden. And we still had a plan that we could do the Jungfrau Yoke. And at one point, they are talking about someone could help us with helicopters that we wouldn't have to waste two hours getting there and back with the crew. We could get in and out in 20 minutes each way. And, and, and I just kept thinking, like, well, you know, again, that's, that's, everyone does that. Let's see what else there is. And, and, and when I met, is it, what was it, Paul? Paul, yeah. When I met Paul, it's like, man, he is gold. What, what a character. He grew up in Lauterbrunnen, which is the next um, town over. And his last name is Brunin, so you're about to hear him say yeah. it. It's and, and, his, you know. and the, the soul of a guy that just looks at flowers all day. Just so beautiful and, and, and sincere. And, and like, I want to do the scene because of him. Yep. And, yeah. and then we kind of, you know, saw how, how great a scene it was with all the other stuff. But it was, uh, you know, so the Schneegi Plata was a, was a big winner for us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was a go gorgeous day. And I, I think actually the Young Frau Yoke was covered in fog that day. Mm -hmm. So in the end, we kind of got lucky that we didn't go there. But Yeah, and I, and I think that really that showcases what we try to go for in places to love. It's, it's people. And a place itself is great, but it's about understanding a place through the people. They give us a sense um, of what this place is about. And let me tell you, if Paul Brunin of Lotter Brunin isn't and doesn't represent the essence of of this area, I don't yeah. know. We have a few comments I want. Uh, Corey Lee. Hello, Corey Lee. How are you doing? Or I should say Kari Lee. He's Southern Kari. Um, he says, boy, number one accessory is a fondue backpack, he says. And a lot of people are like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Daniel wants to know how much it was. I forget. I forget. Uh, probably 25, What's euros. money? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're going once. Yeah, no, no. It, was, yeah, it, was, it wasn't much. It wasn't much at all. And then I think because you, you buy the gym. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't read. I, I remember seeing your price, but I don't remember. I apologize. And he also wanted to know how many fondue sets we got at our, uh, for our wedding. I don't think you even got one. I don't think we did. No? no. That's a mistake. It was a bust. Yeah. All right. All right, so whole, let's see. This whole marriage is a sham, I think. <laughs> you know, wow. Okay, so should we start now? <laughs> yeah, it's just the Rico La Yeah. Okay. All right, so. I'm Paul. Brunner from Lauterbrunnen and I love to show people the beautiful alpine plants. It's Paul's job to take care of the Alpine Garden which opened in 1928. There are over 600 species of plants native to the Swiss Alps on this mountainside sanctuary and Paul makes sure that the paths, flowers and people are all happy. These purple flowers are beautiful. Is that, is that thistle? They call it distal, blue distal. We call it menstrual. Menstrual, okay. Yes, because the woman used to put this menstrual into the bed of the man when he always was sleeping. <laughs> what Under they do? the blanket. This is how to get men out of bed. That's right, to get him up. <laughs> get out of bed. <laughs> yes, he, he was alive again. Oh, is it because it, when it dries, it's a little hard, right? Yeah, so it's you a little want to sleep hard, on that. But not very mean, you see, it's uh, not sticking <laughs> not that hard mean. like a distal. Wow. So much to see. What about these like tall sort of the sword like? The tall is the yellow gentian, and they make schnapps out of. 
yeah. of it. Okay. But also medicine. If the stomach has trouble with the fondue, that really helps. That's really helped. Okay. But they also say if they have heartache or so, this plant is helping oh. because it's so bitter. So Paul, you have the disposition of someone who gets to work up in the mountains and Great look at shot, flowers right? the entire yeah. day. You just have that sort of in your soul. It's so many things are happening and every day is different and that's what I like. That's what's amazing about just being here is you have these epic mountains, so you're always looking out, but then this place reminds you to look down. Sometimes we forget to look at the flowers, that's don't we? That's right. <laughs> Sometimes people come from the east uh -huh. and they ask me where are the flower fields? And I go out with them, uh, show them the flowers, and they said, that's not really flowers, you have to bend down. <laughs> but the mountain it's flowers, well, right? usually yeah. they stay yeah. small, and you have to bend down to In them. In the east, I think he's talking about Zurich. Flower. So it's like and when people, oh, here. they're from New York City. In Switzerland, it's, oh, they're from Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor. It's that's the flavor right. of Switzerland. Yes. So we'll start right From there. So I think you can agree, to like inside going to, uh, I think you'll agree, like uh, going to like a flower garden is one thing, but having Paul there completely changes the scene. It completely elevates it. He is the personification of that place. And uh, finding him, we realized, because I remember you telling me about it, I'm like, eh, and then you told me about Paul, I'm like, there we go. So there's so many times where, uh, where you're, you know, the scout comes back and it's like, we're doing this place, but there's this person. I'm like, tell me more about the person. Mm -hmm. Because you really connect with people through a place. And after a while, it's like scenery is phenomenal, but how do you connect with it? And that's what we're always trying to find out on this show. Interesting story. A week after we shot there, they had uh, an unheard of freak frost and everything was wiped out. Yeah, they got, yeah. No, they got snow. They, they got, got like six snow, inches of snow. Yeah. Like six inches of yeah. snow. Paul sent us pictures. It was like, yeah. oh my in, gosh. In July so, or August. You know, you're in the Alps, guys. Yeah. So. And, you know, we didn't really talk much about the garden. It's like just full of every oh. single kind of plant that grows in the Edelweiss. Alps. Edelweiss. And fun fact, half of them they make schnapps with. <laughs> sure, <exactly. laughs> that was like the punchline and everything. Yeah. Oh, this is a, and they make schnapps for that and it's good for yours. You know, they make schnapps out of that they make schnapps out of this. Do you know what they don't make schnapps out of? What? Ricola. <laughs> but, but what's in Ricola? Alpine herbs. That's true. That's so true. I, it all comes back to that. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> A heavenly valley. There's just no part of this region that doesn't knock your socks off. Case in point, the beautiful village of Lauterbrunnen. So Faye, I'm looking at the traffic here and I thought this was going to be like a nice leisurely bike ride, but we've got like big buses coming by and there's lots of people. It's only a small section though. Okay. Soon we'll leave the road and go onto the bike slash walking path. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Faye Manning, who is originally from the UK, lives here in Lauterbrunnen and she knows that it's a quick ride from this busy stretch of town to pure beauty. So how far back does this trail go? This road probably does another three k's okay. on um, a little bit of gravel and tarmac and then it starts to go up. Nice. How up? <laughs> a couple of hundred meters, maybe more, before it turns into a walker's trail. Stopping here? Oh Yes. What? And making this the best bike slash walking path in the world, a vending machine selling so local meats, cheese. cheeses, and lots, snacks. Yeah. yeah. This oh, one says Geiskas, so I'm not mm. sure where that one's from. So this is pretty cool. So they're a modern um, version. Uh, it's not like these are all over Switzerland. This one farm has uh, a vending machine filled with their cheeses. And you can even get eggs. And honestly, I don't know how that works, but in the scene, we put a bunch of coins in and literally that corkscrew thing kind of came to a grinding halt and our cheese kind of hung there and it was hysterical, but that was something we lost. Um, it was just a glitch in the system. So yeah. this scene was supposed to be longer because we had some really funny like vending machine antics that you don't, you know, you think happens with a zag nut, but like, you don't understand it's gonna happen with like a $12 cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, the stakes are a lot Please. higher. The stakes are so much higher when it's like, you know. So, uh, but it was really cool. Like you could get everything for a picnic from this vending machine, which is, a, I thought, a, a great idea. So Linda, you can't believe the beauty. 
In, in one look, I have neon green pastures. I mean, right up there is a glacier. Yeah. There are waterfalls surrounding us. It's like you see. The uh, any Lord of the Rings fan, Tolkien actually came to Lauterbrunn and saw this in one of the scenes. You know, I, I didn't read any of, the, of those books, but the, um, some of the worlds that he built were based around this oh, valley. Yeah. I did not know that. Wow. wow. Pictures of it, it's and crazy. you don't believe it. And then when you're here, you still don't Just believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I never place. take it for granted because every day it looks different. While sitting on a bench eating cheese is my idea of a perfect day in the Jungfrau region, others are here for more of an adrenaline rush. Yeah, so when I said that this show is a jumping off point, this is what I mean. So Lauterbrunnen, and actually Switzerland in general, which I really didn't realize, is known as sort of a, like a, a thrill seekers paradise mm -hmm. for thrill seeking sports. Yep. And one of them is base jumping. And it is this horrifying sport where people literally just leap off of a cliff and then kind of free fall, well, not kind of, free fall. They're going 82 miles an hour. She's falling at 82 miles per hour and then she releases her parachute. And when you're in this valley and it's known for this, this is the spot in the world for base jumping. As we're talking, uh, Faye and I are talking, you just hear foo, 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 and you'll see these, and you'll see people jump off the cliff. It is the most disconcerting, like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. So um, there's two reasons for that. <laughs> One, Switzerland is still a, a, a belief in uh, assignable risk, that if, if, you, if you jump off the mountain and something happens to you, you can't sue anyone. So like yeah. in America, like if you own the land that Cliff was on, and they're like, whoa, no, you can't jump off my Cliff because yeah. then, you know. I'm going to get in trouble And then two, there's actually a pass. You pay like 20 or 30 euros and basically you can land in a farmer's field and they won't shoot and you. And so they get <laughs> <laughs> If you have that pass. It's always nice Yeah, but that money know. goes to the farmer somehow. Um, yeah, you, you, you just free fall and now someone's going to shoot you. Well, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so for the scene... Um, we didn't know it's all weather driven as well and so we don't know what the weather's going to be like and it can change at any moment and because we wanted this this is actually previously shot footage from I believe Lucy's boyfriend who's also a base jumper and he's following her down and what you're about to see is um, the way Faye and I are reacting we're not reacting to anything we're pretending we're seeing Lucy fall and now I've had a good 12 years of performing arts. I went to school, Syracuse University, for the performing arts. Um, but Faye is the one who totally sells that we are actually seeing her falling. But we don't. This is just edited in. We edit it in later. So go ahead and see, watch, watch the scene. Because we did a good job. <laughs> well, what is that? Is someone jumping off of that? There's <laughs> oh. <laughs> a base jumper. Holy mackerel. Wearing pink, which means it could be more than <sighs> you see. No, yeah. I'm Lucy Levis and I always wanted to fly. Base jumping is jumping of a fixed object. I just jumped about 680 meters tall and I free fall about 15 seconds and I flew with 140 km per hour speed. Oh Woo! my gosh! Nice Hi there. jump! I knew you were jumping today. How cool you landed here! Oh, hey, wow. you just have friends that jump out of the sky. Yeah. That's, I'm Samantha. Hi. Hi. You are awesome. Sam, I cannot believe that. So, how do you get up there? I hiked up there. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> you I get all that in your backpack. In, in the backpack. And then you just bag. jump off. Yeah, you do, yeah. Well, 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 how do you train for this? I mean, you have to know what you're doing as well. Yeah, we first have to take a little course, have a mentorship, or take like a first jump course. And then when you're like, really know what you're doing, then you can come here and jump. So how long have you been jumping off of cliffs? And does your mother know what you do? She does, she, she does. does. Yeah, but she didn't know for the first two years. Yeah. I was too scared to tell her. <laughs> and then I lied to her. I told her that we have a second parachute and we don't. <laughs> It's awful. I know. <laughs> Few urban centers could match the beauty of the mountains, valleys, and countryside, and yet this one does. Bern is the major city in this region, and it doesn't take long to know what that word means or what the symbol of the city mm -hmm. is. Bern is the capital of Switzerland, and yet has a medieval beauty and an unhurried enjoyment of life few capital cities possess. And there's one woman who has bottled the unique essence of this city, as well as the entire region. 
Yes, these are all my children. These are your children? <laughs> yes. You have a lot of children. Yes. <laughs> you must be a tired mom. <laughs> I'm a happy mom. <laughs> I'm Bridget Witchy and I'm a perfumer here in Bern. Bridget specializes in creating unique, personalized scents blended from dozens of handcrafted essences. What I'm looking for is an aromatic souvenir of my trip to Switzerland. Should I smell the bottle or should I smell this? Like that. Oh, only, okay. Only take a first impression. Mm -hmm. How many would I need to create my own scent? Um, I suggest? think we take um, the flowers. Okay. Maybe this. Just the gentleness of her mm -hmm. speaking and her just man. She's a lot like um, she's a lot like Paul in that yeah. sense. And uh, if you want to stop it. Um, She's another example of what we go for when we're looking, when we're scouting. And a lot of people ask, how do you choose your places? What do you choose to put into the show? Um, a perfumery is not exactly a, a unique business. There are a lot of these places not now that you can customize your scents. However, yeah. a scent. However, we love the idea of mm -hmm. coming. All of her um, scents, will, as we're about to find out, are, are Swiss. You know, So they're essences yeah. of a country. So making a very personalized and unique souvenir. But then the story she tells of how she got into scent, wow. And why don't you just roll? Because it, yeah. it, because it was like, we have to do her. I mean, and this, we have to show her. Yeah. Because it changes, it changes everything when we understand the person behind the experience that we get to have. Yes. <laughs> so did you, you created that just for Bird? Yes. I was thinking of the river. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of the rose garden. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of the softness of this city. For me, Bern is really a soft city. Mm -hmm. It's a small city and it's not a rough city. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have time here. You have time to talk. You have time to live. I think really people are happy here. So how did you get started creating perfumes? When did you know that you could communicate with scent? After the college, I decided to do um, a therapy, uh, like a dance therapy mm -hmm. with um, children who are blind, who are disabled. There I created the scent for the massage. Mm -hmm. So I made a scent for Luisa, I made a scent for Tiziano, I made a scent for Omur. And each time the children come to my therapy, they smelled. Just, they didn't see me, just they smelled. Could you tell they were happy? They were very happy. And sometimes when I didn't spray it enough, mm -hmm. they say, oh, where is this uh, Montagsdüftli today? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the scent that they liked. Yes. They liked to the smell. Here is your scent. So lovely. Samantha's burnt She's scent. a good person. <laughs> do you like it really? I do, yes. I do. So here is your scent. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Take care. It's a great shot. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, I don't think I ever told you this, that when I was scouting, I, I literally just wandered in there, just started chatting with her, and she was busy with some other people, and I was just waiting, and um, those people were American, and they asked me what I was doing, I explained it, and when I said that it was for Samantha Brown, they went crazy. <laughs> so, well, you know, people like my show. Yeah, but it was funny because she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> oh, right, Brigitte. No, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. She's like, so what, what, what again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. And uh, Jeff Campagna, um, he writes, that dress is perfect and a perfect color for this scene. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, that's a shout out to my stylist, Christina, who I've been working with for 12, 15 years. And she knows everywhere we go beforehand and she looks at pictures and she sees what what would what's gonna make me stand out? So that is not just sort of like I threw something on. It's a cute dress. I that is uh, styled, and so I'm really 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 lucky, and that is a, a professional touch because I would just be wearing jeans and a black sweatshirt the entire time, <laughs> or something with stripes. I like stripes. Our good friend Charlie Winham's asking, do we yes? still have the perfume? Do you know? When I was watching this this morning, I realized that I lost that bottle, Whoa. the bottle that she gave me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We gotta and go back. I know. Well, there we go. And it, I mean, it, it breaks my heart because um, it was perfect. It was really lovely. All right. Thanks for bringing that up.
Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Why do you do did that, he, Charlie? Did he make a, a Ricola? Wasn't he making? Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie bought and the. Carrie? Yeah. No, that, that's Charles Kyler. This is oh. Charlie Wynnum from Louisiana. Oh, okay. He actually had the whole kit set up. Huh? Charlie, mm-hmm. how's the cocktail? How's oh, the uh, yeah, the right Yodler's in. cough going for you? Yeah, the Yodler's cough. That is the best. That I like that one. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to it. Yep. Bern, like most of Switzerland, operates at a more leisurely pace than other world capitals. But I have an appointment to meet someone, and in this case, I absolutely have to be on time. How long have you had your job? I got this job in 1978. So the, the, the city of Bern has entrusted in you yes. the responsibility yeah. of taking care of one of the icons. I'm Markus Marti. I'm the Zipprockerichter in Bern, which is I'm called so glad the I Timekeeper. Didn't have to pronounce that. <laughs> it really is amazing yes, walking into that space. Mm-hmm and seeing the Jeez. mechanism that you know was built by hand mm-hmm. you know 600 years ago whatever it was mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and still operating and marcus has been the, the time clock keeper for like 30 years something like that yeah. and he said um he'll even get calls from the locals saying it's not working <laughs> because they know he's the guy and and one time they've knocked on his door because they know where he lives so the townspeople I mean, they really, I'm, I'm like acting like they're like Disney characters, but they really do love their clock. And if it if it's not working, he's alerted right away, not by like, you know, some text from work, but like all the people who live around that area who see it every day and, wow. and know if something's wrong, get Marcus. Yeah, the other famous thing about that clock is that Einstein worked for a short period of time across the street as a patent clerk, I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he his office overlooked the clock, and that's where he got some of his ideas of relativity. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, my story checks out. So is this. Now, are all these the original mechanisms? A lot of them are original from 1530. <gasps> so, what was, oh, what was now that? it will start the figure play. Now. So that, that rooster comes out every hour, and now what's yes, that? Yes, yes, and that is the real work. <laughs> Which turns around to the bears. The bears. Yeah, the guard of the city of Bern. And at the same time, the Chester strikes six o'clock. At the same time, Kronos, god of time, mm-hmm. he turns his hourglass here. And at the same time, he opens his mouth like this. What is he saying when he opens he, his mouth? He counts. He counts. What number does he get to? Y- yes, he counts to it, it was six. Six. Six o'clock. Okay. Oh, he counts the number of the oh, hours? Yes, the number of the hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's an interesting experience being in a room where I'm just hearing the ticking just here. Yes. of a clock and yeah. I'm literally... Because what, what's about to happen here is something really cool that I got to do, but then it shows the incredible work of David Dean, our editor. Um, because, you know, I just do the scene and we send him everything and then he comes back with great ideas. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, this because it really enhances the moment and makes you understand what this moment is. And that's that's yeah. what an editor does. They see things that we don't on the road. They see things in the footage that we never thought about and they just take it to a new level. So uh, this is yeah. all David Dean's work from here. I agree. The first time I saw this, I got chills. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. Good, good job. The movement yeah. of time as well yeah. and, and you uh, can stop it <laughs> and i can stop it yeah. can i stop time right now yeah, if you like can i stop it huh? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop time okay <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. okay <laughs> <laughs> Rarely does a city offer something that literally every local takes part in. But that's the gift of the Are River, running right through the city of Bern. My friend Livia Schonenberger knows it very well. 
So this is Say, I've quite, been through um, so many. What, this is what, without any exaggeration, one of the best days of my life. The Are River, the fact that people, and well, you know, the scene kind of talks about it, but just kind of to emphasize what I felt being there. Um, it just, it just like, can Switzerland get no better, right? Like, what else can't Switzerland do? And, and this Are River kind of weaves around the city and actually starts. Um, hours away, we were actually staying in Tune. By Interlaken, yeah. By Interlaken. In and and, and yeah. so on weekends, people drive, uh, drop off people with rafts, and then they make their way finally to back to the city. Yeah. Um, people just, they just jump in. And it's the only time, I mean, you see it all over Switzerland. When we were in uh, Basel, we saw it there. Yeah. Uh, on the Danube, right? Wasn't that the, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, was that the yeah, Danube or the Rhine? The oh, Rhine. Sorry, it's the Rhine. It's the Rhine. Sorry, it's the Rhine. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's the Rhine. No, it's definitely the Rhine. Sorry. Um, and um, it's just magical. It's absolutely magical how this river is just something that people leave work and then jump off into and actually use as a commute home. So, yeah, so Livia actually took me around when I was scouting mm -hmm. Bern. And, you know, this is so just kind of foreign to me. The idea that, you know, if you lived in Bern, you would jump in the river, and which is super cold, and you know, possibly commute to work if you lived on one end and worked in the other. And <laughs> remember, like, be a little skeptical. Yeah. yeah, like or, you know, yeah. you see people in the river. You see a lot of people in the river. And we're like, but are they all tourists? Like, is this a real yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, is this a real I'm thing? I'm like, well, and I was like, okay, well, how many times this week have you been in the river? She's like, well, I went this morning, and yesterday afternoon, and and she and she's like, yeah, I've been there every day all week. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, it checks out. That's a real mm -hmm. thing, then you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, I was lucky when I was there. It was pretty warm, so it, the water was not that cold. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it was. Uh, Jeff so, said, Jeff said, can you go back to the clock? And turn time back to January so we can stop going. <laughs> you got it. I'd be you happy with 2017, the summer of <laughs> when this was filmed. So true. And I have never, ever seen even one person in one of those rivers. People doing this is a completely unique, one of a kind. I, I walked up from dinner yeah. back to my hotel. Typical burn, and during the whole day. Yeah, I was back to people in my hotel and people in there. Into said, the river and to burn. refresh ourselves. So if you time it right, you could actually see people come down with their suits and, and their business wear. Yes, and, and, and for that, also put yeah, it in their, their that's wet bags. the dry bags. Their dry so bags. <laughs> you, you put off your clothes, you yeah. put them in, and then you swim home. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Now I'm looking at it, and, and um, I looked at it from the city, and I was like, oh, that looks nice. And now yeah. that I'm a little closer to the water, it's fast. Yeah, it's, it it's is. not lazy. Yeah. No, the current is quite strong, and you you have to be aware of that. But this is the nice thing of it, because mm, actually you're here. not yeah. um, swimming, you're just floating. If you go to Bern, so, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Absolutely do this. It's a phenomenal experience, but you should not do it alone. I'm not a very good swimmer. I'm not a confident swimmer. Um, and so if you do it, definitely hire a guide. They have guides who take travelers down there. Don't think, oh, that's kind of like, oh, having a tour a guide do that. Get a guide because they know exactly where to go in and they know where to get out. Because that, the, the, um, the, the, oh gosh, the tide, not the, um, is that the tide? Not the tide. Um, the current. Uh, see, current. Thank you. The current, um, is very, is, is very swift. Yeah, and, and I mean, I felt fine. Yeah, no, it's once you're in, it's fine. Honest, the hardest part is getting out. Getting out, yeah. And you get to like, you you, to there's, there's rails like every twenty yards. It's not like you're in trouble, but like but if, if you, you want to get know. at a certain point, you have to be yeah. committed and grab yeah. on. Yeah, you have to know ahead of time. Yeah. 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 Anyway, go ahead. Well, uh, I'm ready to go in. Do you have a preference of where we? Yeah, get actually, into the river? my preference is up there. Oh, so I see. Yes, let's the, go there. Children, check let's go there. Seeing all the locals happily floating by, it's easy to forget that the water from the Are River comes from here. Oh, this is just liquid snow. <laughs> all right, we're going for a swim in the Are River. And so to shoot this right here, can I stop it? Can I? Sure. So to shoot this right here, so you're, I can talk to the camera, and it's right there, you're gonna see it. I have a GoPro on my wrist, and then Chad gave me all of his sound gear, and I have it in the bag in a, in a wet, uh, a dry bag. Uh, and a dry, I know I don't want to call it the wet bag. Uh, it's the dry bag, so that the the, um, the sound equipment doesn't get wet because then they can record my sound and it can be um, it can be synced to the footage. Um, he can't reach me in a boom. He can't do anything. So I have the sound gear in my dry bag and I have the camera on my wrist. And then I was like, I don't need you guys. Yeah, I? I can shoot what this whole show myself. Yeah. Exactly. 
<laughs> perfect now. And now just in The angles weren't exactly the best. <laughs> you know, it actually doesn't feel that bad not feeling my legs. No. <laughs> And if you feeling. put your head down oh. yes, under the water, yes. you hear the rolling of the stones on the ground. It's like the whistling of the wind. It's like the rolling of the, the river in the Aare. Oh. And I love this. I'm not ready to put my head under the water. No. <laughs> Floating down the Are is the perfect balance of relaxed exhilaration. It's a wonderful thing to be with everyone and all feeling the exact same thing. Pure joy. I feel like I'm 15 years old again. People are enjoying to live here. You can see the mountains, you can see the river, you can be in nature and it's calm and peaceful. No one is hurrying through the city like in other countries. It's really um, cozy. Everything is a little bit slower up here <laughs> because I think when people start to look at the flowers, they slow down. They feel something about nature because this is the most beautiful place in the world. It's good for your soul. When we take in the epic beauty of mountains and sky, when in the midst of grandeur we are reminded to notice the little things, when we allow ourselves to slow down time enough to enjoy it, okay. <laughs> that is when we share a love of travel. And that's why the Bern region of Switzerland is a place to love. So that shot, if you can For more information about this the moon, when we share a love is, running, I don't know, is a there, place Kevin. to love. So look at that. That moon is phenomenal. And we as a crew were coming over a bridge and we all saw it. And Brian was like, stop the band. <laughs> and we're literally in the middle of the bridge. And everyone does like a chicken drill out. And uh, Michaela was like, whoa, 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 wait, our Swiss guide. And because you don't do, you, you don't, like, we're Americans, where we kind of do what we want, which is terrible. I know. And the Swiss, they have their rules. And we're just like, we need that moon. And we all just, like, literally dove out of the van to get the shot to make sure it doesn't change. And so every time I see that, it was just like, we literally, like, emptied out the van awesome. and she didn't know what was happening and cars around us didn't know what was <laughs> happening. And we're just like, oh my God, that is the most incredible view. So. Um, yeah, I think uh, there were a few people in Bern who were not happy with an American crew that day. We apologize. Um, so that's that's Bern, and um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Haiti, Flora is so beautiful; it looks fake. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look real. And Haiti, even when you're there, it still doesn't look real. That's the the whole beauty of Switzerland. It's just phenomenally gorgeous. It's also a fantastic place to visit. And I know so many of us. Um, to make us feel better about where we are right now. We're planning big trips for uh, 2021, summer of 2021, and I highly recommend Switzerland be on your list. It's perfect for a solo traveler. It's perfect for couples. It's ex ex exceptional for families. We brought our kids there. Um, they had an amazing time. We then brought your parents and our kids, so we did a multi-generational trip in Switzerland. We've done mm -hmm. it all in Switzerland. And what we love about it is, yes, it is expensive. That's one of these things that people are like, yeah, it's so expensive there, but it completely delivers. Like, it's just like one of the most phenomenal places. And I would say there's so much that then is just free. Like, I feel like Switzerland, um, their, their public space spaces are so beautiful. They have the most amazing parks, water parks that just for a few euro you get in and have pools and fountains and they're all on lakes and I remember being with your parents and your parents would have like coffee and cake and we would be right across the street at the amazing playground and you know some people can do the more you know thrill seeking sports if you have teenagers and then you've got the old your older pair parents who can just stare at the scenery and have a lovely time and you meet up for lunch it's just um, it's also a country that's relatively small and has an exceptional train system as well. We got around by train yeah. all the time. Their app is fantastic. Um, what I loved about their their uh, uh, their train app is not only did it give you your schedule and you can buy everything and just use a Q code to show them your ticket and then you're in. There's no contact. Um, it also had a footpath. Um, when you had to change trains, because I know when you're visiting another country and you're taking the train and you have to change trains, 
that's scary. You're like, am I going to be able to make the train? I've got 10 minutes. What if we're late? Well, in Switzerland, you're never late. Um, but it shows you literally with the connection how you're going to go down, how you're going to go up. And so um, just so phenomenally efficient. And you can really get anywhere you want without a car. You don't have to rent vehicles there. So I, I just feel like it's one of the top destinations. And I just know right now a lot of people are, are planning those bucket list trips and you want to go with the ones that you've missed so much, your loved ones. Switzerland is a phenomenal yeah. choice. And I, and I would say it's it's certainly not cheap, but it's compared to the rest of Europe, Germany, and you know around there, it's you know it's all about the same. If you want to yeah. stay in super expensive hotels, they have that. If you want to rent a like a little yeah. house and like kind of out in the, you know, the, in the in the mountains, you can do that. You know, it's you know, a lot of travel. A lot of times, travel is how you want it to be. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, yeah. Uh, and Tanya, who's asked a lot of questions over the uh, last few months. Um, Absolutely, I, you know. I think you're if you start yeah. if you're doing a Rhine River cruise, you're starting in Basel, which is a great city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I think getting out of there and, and hit, seeing more of Switzerland is definitely a, a mm -hmm. great thing. And yeah, yeah. And just getting in that river, literally one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I just let, like I said in the show, I felt like I was 15 years old again. I felt free and. Uh, and and it, yeah, it was cold, but you don't care. And and yeah. um, but I was brought up in New Hampshire. I'm used to cold. I'm used to cold water. Yeah, and it's so not a long. Thing. You're not in there for like an hour. It's, it's oh, a pretty quick run. You can get us out. And then and yeah. then and this is a true testament to how wonderful the experience was. Once we were all done, my whole crew wanted to, to do it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you got a picture I'm of trying, it. Oh, nice. And so everyone wanted to try <laughs> it because people. It's just such a place of shared joy. And this is something that I deeply deeply miss with travel is shared joy we can't be with each other right now and um there are places where in the world where we all come together and it's just just so magnificent because even though we're all from different parts of the world we're all feeling the exact same thing and that is just exuberance and it's a really palpable powerful feeling and it doesn't matter what language you speak, it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter anything. You're just a human being and you're with other people you've never met and you're all feeling it together. And um, this is one of those places. It's a really it's a really beautiful, powerful place. So highly recommend Bern. Rita's asking how far is Basel from Bern. Oh um, gosh, that's a tough question. I, I would say hour and a half maximum. I feel like everything is an hour from yeah. each other in Switzerland. Yeah, I think that's all, a job, hour and a half, you know. I mean, you're going, you're not going on the other, all the, you know, it's yeah. an hour and a half yeah. ish. Maybe someone could correct me on that. But. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, How far? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff's asking me a question. Oh. So let me take this. He's asking me a question. Thanks, I'm, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we, are, uh, when we scout, are there's things like, can we stop time part of it? No, no, that's David Dean, our editor. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I, I think when I met with the people at the clock, you know, we talked about kind of what we could and couldn't do. Because honestly, I was a little concerned about just having cameras in there, equipment, and bumping into things, and, you know, just kind of what, what, what kind of boundaries they would have for us. But certainly that kind of the storytelling and stuff like that, that's our editor, David Dean, is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. But he finds Th thanks for the question, Jeff. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Oh, David Dean, do that one, David Dean. There's an outtake which we actually used in the promo where Sam, with the woman in the river, thank you for one of the best days of my life, and it's absolutely believable. Yeah, that was cut from the show, David. Why? <laughs> like I totally forgot. And I went back to. Yeah. Yeah. It was like we had it in the show, and then it was just, so. Oh, it's David, in there. You're drinking a beer, and you. Do you say cheers and thank you for that? It's no longer there. It's no longer in the main show. It is, but it's going to be in our, in our show. We'll talk about it soon. But, um, yeah, it was cut from the show. That's a great moment because it's true. It's very, very, very true. <laughs> um, so if anyone has any questions about, oh, Josh from Hollis, New Hampshire here. How was the Swiss chocolate? Since you're from uh, Joshua, David, um, since you're from New Hampshire, I think this is a good time to point out, Josh, that uh, Joshua and I from the state of New Hampshire are actually from where the very first Cog Railroad was created, and that is the Cog Railroad up to the top of Mount Washington. That is the number one rail Cog Railroad in the world, and I was surprised to hear that because I just thought with the Swiss that they would have gotten to the top through a Cog Railway. But but I think New Hampshire, you know, we don't have a lot. We're a small state, so I feel like the fact that we had the first Cog Railroad. And you have cold water. And what? Cold water. And we have very cold, very very cold water. Uh, we have Alan Shepard, uh, 
of uh, Apollo 12, uh, went sure. to the moon, and then we have Ken Burns. So that, that's a Swiss chocolate. Speaking of Swiss chocolate, I've got some right here. This is my go-to chocolate. I literally go through a bar, I would say, every other night, two yeah. nights, every three nights. Yeah. Um, but this is my favorite. It's my uh, touch of sea salt, and I, I buy five at a time. Um, but yeah, it's my favorite chocolate. I love Swiss chocolate. I'll get another drink. Oh, okay. Did you did you drink this one? Yeah. <laughs> Cause look at that. That is totally empty. Um. Stacy Hawkins. Let me click that. Um, editing is so much fun. You get to see the story tape shake, tape take shape in ways you never imagined. And the stress of shooting. I totally agree. Stacy, are you a producer? You totally get it because there's so many times where you're in these situations and you're like, oh man, this is either going north or south. I don't know what. We'll fix it in post. That's usually the saying. Oh, we'll fix it in post. Um, but I can tell you that working with an amazing editor who just knows me so well, he's going to take it to that next level. And editors are phenomenal. And if you ever sit in an editing room, you just realize there's sort of like, there's a little bit of... Um, I don't know that it's like they're they're your god right you can we can take a word out of what someone's saying so they don't say a lot of times what david dean does and this is really important to know is if i'm talking to someone and maybe they're not as um as as, as confident in what they're saying they do a lot of um so anyway um um and then um um and we can take every single um out so it's just this really beautiful, fluid way of speaking, and it makes them look great. And well, you know, we can. It, it's just amazing what you can do with editing. So I agree. Having a, a, everyone's always said like, how do you have a show? An editor, like you have to have a good editor. Yep. They are they are absolutely wizards. You know, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. But we want you to pay attention to the man behind the curtain because he's amazing. Um. Mount Washington, loved your New Hampshire episode. Thank you, Regina. Me too. I loved it. Touch of sea salt. Um, <laughs> Gretchen, Connecticut has the Wiffle Ball. Congratulations. That's that's all. Uh, you have to be. Uh, that's a uh, proud of that. Um, Patty Re Ravencroft, what is the best time of year to visit? I owe my daughter a high school graduation. Ah, man. What a tough time to graduate, right? I mean, I, I still remember graduating from high school. It was a, such a great time. It's such a rite of passage. So yes, you do still owe her an amazing trip. So we were there in the summer. We were there, we think the end of June, right? So, you know, anytime June, July, August is, you know, you'll get the summer where you can really enjoy the Burn River and just go for a swim. But I, you know, I'm kind of of the belief of whenever you can go is a great time to go somewhere, especially like cities and, um, it's just Switzerland is beautiful. And I, I yeah, feel like it's a country that has a lot of sunshine year round. I was there for a wedding in late September and it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Fun times in New Hampshire skiing at Loon Mountain and driving Kangamangas Highway. I went to Loon all the time. That's where I went in my high school years. Oh, Alan Shepard, Apollo 14, not 12. Thank you. And edit by an NASA engineer. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David Stevenson. I had some queued up here. Um, but oh. I went to school in New, uh, New Hampshire, and Alan Shepard was born there in Derry, New Hampshire, and we're called the Astros. Pinkerton Astros. I don't know why, though. I'm only kidding. Our good friend, Angel Gassianos. Huh? Yes, more you like, like, is, that, is, that, is that the new version of more cowbell? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Haney asked about I think dialects of German in Switzerland I oh my gosh I, I yeah. can't answer that but I can say there's actually four languages in Switzerland Romanach Romanach people talk about Italian German mo most of geographically most of Switzerland's German speaking then French speaking and then a kind of smaller pocket of Italian speaking but there's a fourth language called Romanche Romanche that they speak like in the mountains it's very mysterious mm -hmm. It is more mysterious. I think it's more like Latin based, right? Yeah, I mean, like yes. Really Latin. Yeah. Um, this was back to our conversation about uh, um, fondue sets. Mm hmm. A bright orange, 1968. Of course you do. I can I don't see think that there's orange anything right that's, now. Is there such thing as a non bright orange? No, it has to be. Set? And, it's the, and I feel, feel like that's a, actually a good description of that orange fondue orange. Mm. It's, it's a definitely it's 19 kind of a burnt late. Orange. It's a burnt orange, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, 
uh, someone called out the fact that your Hooters was featured in your interlocking episode. Of course it was. Thank you. Who's that? Because that's amazing. You've been with Jeff, me for a while. Jeff Companion. Thank you. Yes, we did. The Hooters, um, I don't think we actually went there. I think we just showed it. Um, but yeah, that was something that I was really surprised of as a young young girl visiting Europe for the first time, that they would have a Hooters. I mean, why? Why not? <laughs> Someone's been drinking too many Yodeler's Cough. The right amount of Yodeler's <laughs> Cough right over here. Uh, our good friend Charles Tyler looked up the fondue backpacks, but just over 20 bucks to rent. I mean, pretty good, right? So I might have guessed, though. I bet you rent the... Then you then probably buy the, buy the cheese, cheese yeah, right. and the wine and bread. Yeah, yeah, and I think I said... Yeah, exactly, so... So the backpack itself... Is twenty bucks or so plus plus the other. And the cheese is probably like two hundred bucks. What do you think? <laughs> I don't want to get it. Yeah, where well, you can just break into the uh, the cheese ball. The cheese cave. <laughs> the yeah, cheese exactly. Cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. Uh, a few people have commented about the dog in the background. We don't have a dog. What are you talking about? We have a dog. Yeah. Where's yeah. that? That's actually uh, that's, not, that's actually we have two of those, but I couldn't find one of them because you know we have two kids, so you can't just get one stuffed Saint Bernard. No, you got to figure out how to put two in your in your um, in your luggage. So that was when we visited. Um, has anyone seen my Geneva episode in Switzerland? That was two years Season ago. Season two, yeah. Season two, where I visited Berryland, where they breed the national dog of Switzerland, the Saint Bernard, and they had Saint Bernard puppies, and I was mauled by like ten of them. And it was another best day of my life moment. I mean, just incredible. But uh, yeah, so that's from there. And so we'll obviously do that episode too. So I uh, had to buy two of them for my two kids. <laughs> um, don't eat with your mouth full. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think just kind of looking at a lot of the comments, um, people just... Um, love Switzerland. I mean, it really is one of these places that you dream about going. And what I found being a traveler for so many years and just understanding marketing and what you see and what you see in travel programs and and what we get on TV, I I just felt like it was always about the view. And there's so much more to Switzerland than the view. The people are just lovely. Yeah. And and a a tremendous amount of passion, but they're very conservative about it. I mean, it's really fascinating getting to work with people around the world. So when we work, when we do our show in Brooklyn, and I'm with someone, and they're talking directly to camera, and I'm sort of coaching them and saying, "Hey, you know, get you know, tell me who you are. Forget about it. I did this, this, this." I mean, they've got so much moxie, right? There's so much confidence in someone who's from Brooklyn, and and they're ready to tell you about it. I did this, this, and this. You ask someone from like Texas Hill Country to do the same thing. They're so humble. It's very hard for them to sort of talk about their accolades or pump them up. They don't like to talk about them. I put them in a in a tough position. And in Switzerland, it was just they're, they're very they don't understand. A lot of people just don't understand that what they do is really special, and they just it's just who they are. And so when we're working with Marcus, who is the Times Keeper, and Brigitte, who they don't they don't get it that that what they do is really exceptional. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we always try to bring out in people. And that's what I really work a lot behind the scenes. You don't see that. But even though we have our notes and our producer goes and talks to them to try to figure out you know, their life a little bit more so we understand going in a lot about what these people do and who they are, um, I always spend time talking with them while we're setting up shots just so they get more comfortable with me. And maybe I get just like a little more information because it's just everyone we have ever met has this beautiful story and thing is no one thinks it no one thinks they're exceptional and and so it's this how do we how do we get that out and how do we make sure that they feel comfortable enough telling us the story and so i feel like brigitte just oh my gosh when she said she worked with children and just the the power of scent to to calm them to make them know they could trust her so they could be themselves relaxed. I mean, it's just you really understand that the, what the power of perfume is. It's not just this luxury that we put on ourselves. It's it, it makes us feel a certain way. It makes us feel confident. It makes us feel safe. And I've never, in all the perfume scenes I've done, and I've done a lot of them and loved a lot of them, um, Brigitte, I think, really hit that um, hard. So that's what we're always trying to um, show is the, is I always say we, we're always trying to show the emotional value of where we are. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the stories that we found in Switzerland were just, you know, it's a magical place. I, I felt like, you know, the first time I went there was for this scouting 
uh, you know, I'd been all over Europe, but not been to Switzerland. And, and the, I always felt like there's such a, it's such a, it's such a common place you go if you go into Europe for the first time, especially doing like a big tour, like a bus tour or something all through Europe. Like you certainly would go through this part of Europe because it's, you know, for hundreds of years, it's been a tourist destination. I mean, there's other parts of Europe that we kind of know of now, like Barcelona, like, you know, everyone goes to Barcelona, but like, you know, a generation ago, that wasn't on, that wasn't a big de- tourist destination. It wasn't until the Olympics that it became mm. this kind of a big international city. I'm not saying it wasn't a great city before. It's right. just, it wasn't like... On people's radar yeah, in terms of... But like Switzerland always has been. Always, yeah. And it delivers 100%. And I felt like, I felt like kind of like, how have I not been here before? Yeah. You, you go, I mean, Bern as a city is wonderful. It's a capital city, but it's so small and, and, mm-hmm. and just has a great energy. It's not quiet, but it's... it's a soft city. Yeah. That's what Brigitte says. It's and and then, city. you know, the river, but then going to like where the Jungfrau Yoke is and, you know, the big mountains and around Interlochen and, and seeing that, it's just like, man, yeah. it's just, you really feel like you are somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Brunnen, just these gorgeous, gorgeous. valley towns and yeah like, it's like it's you're like, looking at the supermodel of countries yeah like what yeah. else i mean like an, like when we saw the water the waterfalls in water Brunnen, like oh my gosh you've got waterfalls like enough yeah. imagine enough. a long valley which is waterfalls <laughs> yeah. dumping into it yeah it really is like you, you okay we're, we're the we're the, the the you know the jumping porpoises right they don't have that <laughs> yeah. you don't have that do you huh I wonder if they'll have the yodeler's cough. Now. I think the yodeler's cough is definitely. Did you come up with that, or did yeah, someone else? I, I think that's a good. That's a good one. Do you know what I just realized? That I've had three of these. No, <laughs> we never put our kids to bed, and I don't hear anything downstairs. They're watching, anymore. They're watching shows. Are they really? Yeah. Sure. Okay. God bless Disney Plus. We didn't turn it off. They're still watching. <laughs> you think they're? <laughs> so true on Godless TV our kids you know we really try to limit it they only get like six hours of TV a day <laughs> now they act like that though um, well thank you so much I think yeah. next week we have oh, wait, wait, there's, there's a, oh, oh, one more question. question oh yeah okay um because Tyler had asked this earlier I think and, and he asked it again asking about how we film those bike shots mm-hmm lots of GoPros mm-hmm and then and you have like several, like one on the front facing you, one over your shoulder kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One on her bike. One on her bike. Yeah. So and then and then. Um, Were they in a car going backwards? Him shooting backwards? Yes. They, I was gonna say like there's gotta be some other shot. Yeah. So on that trail that we were on, they're in a big minivan and he's just rolling behind me, that sort of thing. So yeah, we always try to get really great shots and rolling shots uh, on a budget, which is a minivan. Um, and I think our next show would be. Brooklyn. Nice. Brooklyn in the house. Yeah. Actually, I, I was, my, my PC is rebuilding right now, but um, in Montreal, no we did that, the... No one knows what that means, Kevin. My yeah. PC is rebuilding right oh, now. Oh, my server's building. Trying right to show off. Um, otherwise, I'd be able to show you the picture, but um, talking about bike shooting, our second camera, Chelsea, in Montreal, we had one of those, like, uh, back seats on a bike, you know? And remember she filmed back, she sat backwards on the bike, and Michael rode the... Bike. Oh, yeah. So she's in this huge That's camera awesome. facing we'll backwards on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. And riding ahead of Sam is, you know, was was a uh, camera women cool. and men are fearless. Yeah, they know, they have no they have no fear, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, so next week, same time, Wednesday, nine p.m. We're gonna do Brooklyn, our episode. This was our proof of concept. So that we shot this without all of our own money, everything going like I think we can do this. Houston was our very first official episode where we had we actually had a season. We're we're in business. Brooklyn was how we proved to public television that we could do something. Yeah. So it was a half hour episode, so you're going to see just the rawness of it all. And we will not be in Brooklyn for that. <laughs> we will not be in Brooklyn for that. No. But we no. will be uh, in New York State. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. I hope this was a great night. It was a great night for us. Great questions. Thank you so much. Brooklyn in the house. Daniel, yeah, that's us. Um, and what do you eat fondue with? It's just bread. Oh, and wine. Wine. Well, yes. The cheese and wine and brandy, I think. Yeah. But she's like, do you eat it? You know, do you eat it with steak? It's bread. Do you get, like, do you, well, yeah, there's, bread. there's such a thing as an oil, a meat fondue, but it's basically oil that you dip meat into. But the classic one is a cheese fondue. Or like a chocolate fondue, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, chocolate fondue. Yeah. I think that's more American, though. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night.